Let's look at some of the new logical editing functions in Cubase 12. We'll see new user interfaces for the project logical editor as well as the logical editor. The input transformer has moved. It used to be just a tiny icon here with kind of a cryptic icon. And now it has its own line where you can see input transformer. Some of the terminology has changed as well. So global is now changed to project, local to track. When we open up the panel, one of the things that we'll see is we have the ability to a new, see a new user interface where we have four modules. So as we click here, we could activate the modules and there's also a number of new factory presets as well. The MIDI plugin for Transformer has also been updated. So if I go to my MIDI inserts, we could look at our Transformer. And as we come here again, a new user interface and presets that are more applicable for live real-time MIDI transformation. One of the things that people would always have a problem with when they really got into the logical editing is managing their presets because the presets would get mixed up with the factory presets with user presets and it would all show up in one list. So the presets have been organized where we have a search function, but if we want to actually create your own presets, we could define the show user presets location. So I could click here, that would take me immediately to the folder. Here we could have subfolders and subfolders and easily share these presets with different people or get them from online. There's some new functions that have been introduced with the logical editor as well. So if I want it to come and let's say I have all of my notes selected, we have functions for extract to lanes and deselecting functions. So let's say I have all these notes selected and I wanted to deselect notes that were, let's say lower than E3. So we could choose for our function deselect. And as we click here, we can now have the other notes still selected, but we could deselect particular notes based on the criteria. If we wanted to choose extract to lanes, at this point I could say, okay, I wanna take all of these MIDI notes here below E3 and we'll extract it to a lane. So when we look at it in our project window, we can see one lane here would be the higher notes and another lane could be the lower notes. There's some new filter targets that have been added as well and some enhancements with some. So if we want to come over, we could say, let's go to our logical editor and let's say I want it to select particular notes uh, around beat two. So I will just remove this target here and we'll go to insert and we'll choose position. Uh, so we'll say inside bar range. And the logical editor had this before, but it was pretty cryptic to understand because the values were represented in ticks as opposed to PPQ. So now we could have a more obvious selection of what notes we want to work with. So if I wanted to select notes around beat two, I could just come there and select notes just that easily. One of the other filter targets that we have is the ability to in select notes and criteria based on inside selected marker. And that's also applicable for the project logical editor. So there's some new enhancements with the project logical editor as well. So let's say if I want to have a track that had automation and I wanted to select the track that had its automation here and I wanted to increment or decrement by values of a DB. Previous versions, we could increment and decrement automation by percentage only. So, but if you wanted to say, you know, make this louder by one dB or softer by one dB, it was really hard to do. So when we look at our functions, we'll see that the project logical editor also has deselect as a function. So what I want to do is we're gonna say insert, and I would want to say media type is equal to automation. And we're gonna have a new property tab here. So because a lot of times we may have the track selected and I need to have the information of kind of the parent information of where this information is. So we say, we'll say property is set and we're going to choose to parent object is selected. And when we go to here, we want to make sure 
we click on our insert in our transform actions we'll go to trim and then we're going to say uh, increment by 1 db so now if we look at the automation for this particular event as we look at it here and we'll hit apply we can see that the automation itself will just increment by 1 db or if we want to decrement by 1 db so i could just select the track and be able to transform the automation just that easily if we have a number of colors that have been selected that we want to increment or decrement as well we have some new functionality for colors so i'll come here let's say we want to take all of these tracks and let's say i want to take the selected tracks and increment the colors so again we'll say we want to say media type uh, we'll just say our container type is equal to a track and we'll set our property to event is selected and when we go to colors we'll come to insert and we'll choose set color so at this point i could choose to increment or decrement the colors so if we look at the colors here as i hit apply they will just change if i wanted to select different colors i can now let's say deselect particular colors here and i could now just only change those selected colors so very nice addition we'll also have some new naming conventions as well so let's say i wanted to take um these particular tracks here and where they're audio one audio zero one audio zero two and i wanted to just kind of change the name conditions so we'll say uh we're going to say our track is selected and for our transform what we could do is we could go to name and then we have some new functions where we could erase before erase after erase front character or erase end character so i could say i want to erase before and what i want to do is in parameter one we're going to say i want to erase before zero one so and now as i do this we can see that the track name for audio zero one will automatically just change to zero one so we can erase based on certain criteria now many times we may want to have a number of tracks that are set to the wrong output so let's say i have all of these audio tracks here and they're all going to output to and i want them to set them to a different output let's say to my main stereo out so i'm going to say again we'll take our selected tracks and then we will go to track operation and we could now come over here and connect inputs or outputs to particular tracks so i'm going to se select connect outputs and as we come over here i can see all of my midi outputs all of my audio outputs i'll say let's connect it to stereo out and hit apply and now all these tracks have been remapped to a particular input or output as we look at this we could see that we also have pre and post commands and this could be a very interesting thing let's say i have a number of tracks in my project where i have different instruments these instruments aren't being used and i wanted to kind of hide those tracks that are empty and i wanted to disable them so they're not taking additional cpu cycles so when i come over here i would just go to a user preset that i created and we could have functions you know, that are keyboard shortcuts basically or macros or project logical editor presets that can that can occur before we do our processing and then we could have four different functions that occur that can occur after so here i want to take all of my midi tracks um, and for the ones that are empty so let's say we have a number of different midi tracks here that are empty and let's say if i have my visibility set so let's say i have this retro log i have some other tracks so what i could do now is we're going to select all of our midi tracks and the container type is set to track and our property is set to is empty so once it once it selects all those events based on that criteria it's now going to 
disable the track and hide the particular tracks so that we don't see it on our project window. So as soon as I come here, I hit apply and now all of my tracks that were empty are now hidden. So you can see the incredible flexibility with all of the new logical editing functions found in Cubase 12.